When a new member of any family arrives on the scene, it's good to have a camera around to record the happy event. Those magical first hours, days, or weeks of life are very special, all too brief moments of wonder and beauty, of tenderness and humor, the never-ending miracle of birth, growth, and survival. Animals, of course, don't take pictures, so we humans do it for them, but mostly for ourselves, so that we can share in some of nature's most fascinating experiences as we look at intimate portraits of baby animals. New arrivals come in all sizes, shapes, and colors, with a whole range of hereditary characteristics adapted to their needs and habitats. Some of them are single offspring, like this bison calf, little more than one week old. You might say it has no siblings, but many cousins, all living within the protective atmosphere of a bison herd. Other young ones, like these three-day-old mallard ducklings, have many brothers and sisters, 11 in this lively family. However, father is not around, so mother will be both guardian and teacher. Some baby animals are dead ringers for their parents. Except for size, and possibly a slight variation in coloring, it's hard to tell a six-week-old prairie dog from his mother or father. However, this young coot, who looks like he might be costumed for a masquerade ball, bears little resemblance to either of his rather plain-looking but devoted parents. Nourishment and proper feeding are all important for the development and survival of any baby animal. But there is more than one way to get food. If you're a week-old white-tailed fawn, you will rely almost entirely on mother's milk supply and will nurse several times a day. But if you're a three-day-old cardinal chick in a tree nest, both father and mother will bring food to you and actually drop it in your mouth. All you have to do is ask for it. But young white pelican chicks, only a few weeks old, have to work for their supper. Parents catch fish and store it in their gullets and expect you to dive in after it. Great blue herons, on the other hand, swallow the fish they catch, bring it to the nest, and then regurgitate it, dropping it at the feet of their hungry offspring, who fight over it. The oldest usually eats first. Again, we observe a handsome parent with endearing but rather odd-looking little ones.
Exercise on a mountainside in July, in the sunshine and fresh air, can develop strong muscles, agility, and graceful coordination. For six-week-old bighorn lambs, it can also be a lot of fun. It seems that one thing all baby animals like to do is play, romp around, mimic or imitate adult behavior. It's June in northern Quebec, and a newborn caribou calf receives encouragement from its mother as it struggles with incredible determination to stand on its feet. So many things are happening here so quickly. A close bond is developing between mother and calf through sight, sound, and smell. Baby becomes hungry and starts looking for food. Somehow it must find the mother's milk. That takes time. Meanwhile, it never stops trying to get up and stay up. Finally, on wobbly legs, she takes those first giant steps. A week later, she's quite a charmer, strong and healthy, nursing often, moving around a lot, observing everything. Soon, she's surrounded by other calves her own age. At one month, the calves nibble on fresh vegetation and run with the caribou herd. Now for some intimate bird watching at a cardinal nest in southern Ontario. Father wears the traditional scarlet robes and shares nesting and feeding duties with mother, whose coloring is more muted for better camouflage. During the daylight hours, each chick is fed every 20 minutes or so. It's a high-protein diet of worms, caterpillars, and other insects. When they grow up, they will add fruits and seeds to their list of favorite foods and be popular songbirds. But for now, mother provides food. Food and more food. Neither the chick's feathers nor their internal thermostats are fully developed yet, so they must be shaded and brooded 
protected from the heat and the cold. But when only two weeks old, they will be ready to leave the nest. Young black bear cubs will never fly like birds. Instead, they learn early to climb trees for fun and survival. They seem to spend most of their time playing, pushing and shoving, wrestling and chasing around, getting into mischief. On this bright summer day in northern Minnesota, no one ever seems to get hurt or run out of steam. Now this looks like play but there are ants in that old tree stump, and bears like to eat ants, bees, and other insects. Growing bear cubs do get hungry. Mother is seldom far away. They will stay with her for almost two years. When they grow up, they will become shy and quite unpredictable. Now we've seen this bald-headed, bizarrely colored little water bird before. He's a just-hatched coot chick, and he's ready to go places and do things. It's time for that very first skinny dip. There are many obstacles for an adventurous chick in the duckweed of this prairie pond near Edmonton, Alberta. And bright yellow bladderwort flowers to discover. This tiny coot already has several nicknames. When he grows up, he may be called Shuffler, Pond Crow, Bald Face, Mud Hen, Blue Peter, or the Water Chicken. A new chick or two will hatch each day until all the chicks have hatched. Some coot families are quite large, 10 or more. Another chick joins the family. In a few weeks, they will lose their incredible coloring and look more like their parents. In eight weeks, they will fly. This is an elephant seal pup, one week old. It stays close to its mother and would be in danger if they became separated. 
They're part of a harem here on Ananuevo Beach in California under the protection of a dominant alpha bull. In January, the beach is so crowded, there is hardly room to turn around. A seal cow will nurse no other baby but her own, so bonding is very important for survival. That's the old alpha bull, the patriarchal policeman, letting us know he's around. Sand tossing is a favorite elephant seal activity. Sometimes a pup doesn't quite know what to make of it. The cows often fight among themselves. But eventually things quiet down and a pup can enjoy the California beach life while it lasts. Like the elephant seals, a colony of nesting white pelicans can look much like an overbooked summer resort. There is little or no privacy. They build the simplest of makeshift nests on the ground, and the females lay two to four eggs in late May or early June. When a chick hatches, it looks naked, rubbery, flesh color, featherless, much like a tiny plucked chicken and has trouble keeping its head up. Here's a way to keep from being sunburned. Sometime after the 10th day, the chicks will begin to feed in the traditional white pelican manner, diving into their parents' throats for fish, often flown in by Pelican Air Express. It's amazing, in another six weeks, the young will fly. Late June, at the wetlands nest of a pair of red-necked grebes, the parents, who look very much alike, share most nesting duties.
A newly hatched chick is striped like a tiny zebra and has a spot on its head that turns bright red when it is hungry or excited. A chick climbs up on its parents' back for warmth, but it's also a good vantage point for observing the world around you when you're one day old. More than likely, you will also get fed. Feeding over, the parent turns to nest maintenance. The chick tumbles into the water and begins to swim, easily and gracefully. On day two, parent and chick go for a swim together around the nest. The chick hitches a ride while the parent hunts for food. The next day, chick number two appears. For some unknown reason, it tries to crawl back into its shell. Here we have both parents, two chicks, one older, one younger, off on a feeding expedition, a kind of movable feast. At times it can be a rough and tumble life, but the chicks are hardy little birds. However, when it comes to sheer comfort and warmth, nothing beats that thick feather bed. This beautiful bird is an adult avocet. It feeds by sweeping its upturned bill back and forth under the surface of the water. It nests in May in loose, open colonies. The female usually lays four eggs. Both sexes incubate, although one mate seems to be somewhat camera shy. Once again, a chick looks nothing like its parents, but it does have big feet and is soon standing. Incubation of the other eggs continues while parent and chick get to know each other.
only one day old. He's a bright, active little fellow. A few days later, four chicks have hatched, and the parents take them for a swim. And possibly a feeding lesson. What a surprising sight. A nest of tiny American bitterns. The little known, rarely seen, hermits of the marsh. Looking like aging punk rockers, fluttering to keep cool. Only mother stays with them on the nest. Provider, guardian, teacher. And there's always a warm, safe place under her wing. The chick grabs its mother's bill to let her know it's hungry, to stimulate her to regurgitate food. Day by day, as the chick grows older, it perfects its bill-grabbing technique. At one week, is the chick imitating nest maintenance or conducting some unseen orchestra? Freezing, erect, head up, blending in with the reeds and rushes is a traditional bittern method of wetland camouflage. When it rains, all you can do is curl up in a ball and huddle together until it passes. Nesting among the salt cedars, we find four balls of fluffy down, only two or three days old. In just about six weeks, they'll be flying and looking more like their delicately plumed parents. For a preview of what the future holds, we have only to observe on a nearby branch a guardian parent, a pale pink water bird with blood red patches on its shoulders and a unique spatula shaped bill, the stunning roseate spoonbill.
Unlike spoonbilled chicks, young green-backed herons are slow developers. They stay in their tree nests for about eight weeks and have all their food brought to them. As a family, they're loners and the smallest of all North American true herons. They have many fascinating nicknames, Indian pullet, crab catcher, and fly up the creek, to name a few. For many, there is nothing more fascinating than bird watching. With more than eight and a half thousand species sharing our planet with us, this is truly the age of the bird. Sunrise, somewhere on the great western plains. A herd of mammoth bison grazes in the copper-colored mist rising from the wet grasslands. It is June, and calves only a week or two old can be seen mingling with the herd. Nearby, male sage grouse perform an amazing courtship display. Meanwhile, in Yellowstone Park, another bison herd wanders over its grazing range. This hardy little calf was born little more than a week ago. It has neither the humped shoulders nor the massive head of its parents, nor that wild coat of dark, woolly hair. But it has learned how to nibble on fresh grasses and how to scratch a niche. It stays close to mother for that all-important milk supply. And sometimes, though, it can mistake some other mother for its own. and be quickly sent on its way. This time, however, there is no mistake, and the nursing session is carried out with traditional enthusiasm. Perhaps with too much enthusiasm. It looks like mother's had enough. But her calf seems to have a different idea, and it does a little gentle nudging. But mother isn't going to budge. As the day grows hotter, the calves rest more often. Nearby, at the entrance to one of their tunnels or holes, is an elusive neighbor, the prairie dog. Born underground, the babies have only recently surfaced to feed, play, and observe. This mouth examination may be some form of bonding between parent and offspring. Three older bison engage in a lively sparring match 
while close by, month-and-a-half-old calves circle and butt, imitating adult behavior. Now for a brief glimpse of a well-constructed yellow warbler tree nest and two active but fragile looking little birds, mouths open, begging for food. A parent obliges with a green caterpillar. Time for a little shading or brooding and a remarkable close-up of parent and chick. In the wilds, you might not want to get this close to a family of baby alligators because usually a parent is in the neighborhood. It's hard to believe that these little ones, about the length of a shoebox and nine months old, will ever grow into the largest reptiles in North America. Alligators are slow developers, but well adapted to their environment. After all, they've been around a long time. Sometimes they climb on their parents' back to rest. Other times they crawl over a parent's face, a habit recommended only for baby alligators. They hatch in late February in solitary treetop nests and are called winged tigers. They will become swift, deadly hunters. But when young, they are protected, almost pampered offspring who have almost everything done for them by their great horned owl parents. It can be cold and damp in the northern woodlands in March. One parent hunts or stands guard while the other broods the three-week-old owlets. Three or four days later, the camera records a routine feeding session. The younger owlet waits until the older one is through. Soon both have had their fill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Almost two weeks have gone by, and the owlets are five to six weeks old. A storm is on the way. This little fellow may have caught sight of the camera. A young monarch of the wild, spotted like a white-tailed fawn, an elk calf, not quite three days old, but growing quickly. In a day or two, it will be following mother wherever she goes. They join the herd, where the calf will mingle with the other calves born in June. Elk like the water and are good swimmers. They often feed on aquatic vegetation. The young, of course, like to play and run around. Time for a milk break. And later, a rest. Hidden in the tall grass, a young elk might be mistaken for a rabbit. We're back with the water birds at a remote wilderness nesting site. Once again, we observe a baby bird who does not look like its parents. Common loons the great northern divers. As soon as the chick dries off, it heads for the water. It doesn't go far the first day, but when its sibling hatches, the whole family goes for a swim through the wild rice. Like young grebes, loon chicks hitch rides on their parents' backs.
We're going on an uncommon adventure with some of the youngest mountain climbers in the world. Their mothers, or nannies as they're called, are their only guides along the narrow, crumbling, rocky mountain trails. They're young mountain goats, some a few days old. Already they're making decisions, taking chances. There's plenty of time to graze and to play, to spar with one's siblings or cousins, to circle and butt, to mimic adult behavior, to test oneself and others. For a year, the kids, as they're called, stay close to mother. No other large mammal except the cougar comes this high up unless you count mountaineers and photographers. We said it's good to have a camera around during those first few weeks of life, to share moments of wonder and beauty, of tenderness and humor, and the miracle of survival with our marvelous neighbors, the animals who share our planet. <laughs> 